Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. Well, let's go ahead and open our Bibles, if you will, to the uh, fourth chapter of the book of Romans. We're, we're going to pick up with this morning because where we are in the points of living a victorious life, we'll work on receiving healing. And I thought, well, you know, we may as well just kind of jump in there. Amen? And just get after it. Hallelujah. So, let's look at Romans chapter 4, verses 16 through 21. Therefore it is of faith that it might be by grace to the end the promise might be sure to all the seed, not to that only which is of the law, that is, you know, righteousness of the law, um, that... Um, I believe Weymouth refers to it as uh, law righteousness and faith righteousness. Um, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, of made thee the father of many nations, before him whom he believed, even God, who quickens the dead, calls those things which be not, as though they were, who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations, According to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. Notice his belief was according to that which was spoken. Now we have two, we have two venues we can receive faith. Faith comes by the hearing and hearing by the word of God. If you get the audible word of God, God speaks to your spirit. Faith can come that way. Now understand if God does speak to you, it's going to be in line with his written word. It's not going to be contrary to his written word. Okay? He's not going to go to Benny and say, Benny, you know, Go out and, you know, rob banks and I'll bless you. And Benny goes, I got the faith to rob banks because the Lord spoke to him. Well, no, he didn't. You know, they said he and the hen that steal, stole still no more. Hallelujah. Are you here? But be honest in how you work. And so he says here that Abraham believed according to that which was spoken. And then the second way is from the written word. I reversed those. It really should be all the way around. The written word is the primary way. God will speak to you, but he will always speak to you in line with his written word. He does not speak to you out of line with the written word. It's always in line with it, all right? Uh, but whether it's the written word or, the, or a spoken word from God to you, in other words, he speaks to your spirit, amen, um, faith comes. Amen. amen. According to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, he considered, and the King James says, consider not that. Every other translation you find says he did consider. <clears throat> I don't think it's a mistranslation as much as their attempt to say something in a way that maybe made sense in, in 1611 that doesn't make sense today. Or you have to really kind of look at it and go, what are they trying to say? Um, you know, in other words, he did not, when looking at it, he didn't take into consideration that as a viable fact. Okay? The deadness of Sarah's womb, neither, um, uh, that his own body was dead, even when he was about 100 years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, uh, being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able to also to perform. Now, so like I said, <clears throat> the King James translated, he's considered not his own body. Um, and in determining on how language was, you know, you could say, um, he, he could say, well, yeah, my body's dead, but I don't consider that. In other words, it doesn't weigh in, in a way in my life that pro prohibits me from, from believing what God said. Okay? And I believe that's what the King James translators are trying to do, but, you know, uh, 400 years later, it doesn't work as good. Okay? Uh, maybe, you know, you know we, we know the Brits talk different than we do. Even today, they talk different than we do. You go over to England, you get a menu, and they got a menu. And they got, you know, most menus in, in Europe will have multiple languages for all the things on it, and they'll put little flags by them. They'll put the German flag for German, they'll put the French flag for French, and they'll put whatever. So when you look down the menu, oh, there's the French, like, you know, I can order out of the French, there's French. Well, they have a British flag for English, and they have an American flag for American. We don't speak English, we speak American. Okay, it's kind of like, you know, the Spanish say that the Mexicans don't speak Spanish, they speak Mexican. And there are differences in the languages, okay? And so, in, in language, 
<coughs> changing over time, we come here. So let's look at this um, in, in, um, in Weymouth. He said, without growing faith, uh, weak in faith, he could contemplate his own vital powers, which now, now decay, for he was 100 years old in Sarah's barrenness. The Amplified says he did not weaken in faith when he considered the utter impotence of his body, which was as good as dead because he was about 100 years old, or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's dead in the womb. And so I, I think if you, if you just kind of look at this so that we don't think, oh, we've got, we got errors. We don't have errors. It's trying to say the same thing, just doing it in a different way, okay, when they were, when they were uh, translating. And again, the King James being a word-for-word -word translation uh, did not take some of the liberties that other translations do to give, bear out meaning uh, with their translations. And the, the bottom line here is Sarah, Abraham looked at his body, looked at Sarah's body, and that did not stop him from believing what God said about it. And that's what they're trying to say in any, whatever translations. Amen? Hallelujah. So we look back up here in verse 16. It says, um, I'm sorry, not verse 16, but verse... Yeah, well, 17, the second half of it, where he says, As it written, I may thee follow many nations before him whom he believed, even God, who quickened the dead, and calls those things which be not as though they were. Weymouth says, makes reference to things that do not exist as though they did. So, you know, um, now let's go over to Hebrews 11 one with these, this in mind. God. In order to receive from God, we're going to have to count things done before they're done. Count them done. Now, people call you foolish. I won't believe it until I see it. Well, if you're going to wait until you see it to believe it, you're not believing. You're seeing. Jerry does not have to believe there's a chair under him. There's a chair under him. Isn't there, Jerry? Do you believe it or you just know it? How do you know it? Because it's there. You're sitting in it. Right. See? It takes no faith to believe the chair is there. He sees it. He can feel it. He can touch it. Hebrews 11.1. 1, now remember, God makes reference to things that do not exist as though they did. King James says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now I was reading the Amplified. And... Um, and I don't know, sometimes, you, you know, you go over things and, and, and maybe you've read stuff out of different translations and, and never read them out of a, another one for some reason or another, or it just didn't register, but this time it registered. Okay, you know what I'm saying? So I was reading Hebrews 11, 1 out of, out of the Amplified, just, just to kind of get, get a different take. You might, some people go, well, I, I, I saw that years ago. Well, that's great. I'm glad you did. I just saw, I just saw it. <laughs> All right? Uh, last night. I was reading it, just, I said, well, I'm going to read out of the Amplified just to see something different. You know, and I, and I you know, maybe read out of Weymouth just to see something different. I do that all the time. I just, I'll be reading, and I'll just pick up, I'll grab a translation that's laying around, pick it up, look at it, okay, and put it back and go on reading. Just to see if, well, if it had a little bit different twist or whatever on it. Um, but here the Amplified Bible says on Hebrews 11, when now faith is the assurance, the confirmation, the title deed of things we hope for, being the proof of things we do not see and the conviction, not like this, of their reality. Faith, this is what really kind of struck me. Faith perceiving as real fact what is not revealed to the senses. Hallelujah. <clears throat> now, I've preached this, this scripture hundreds of times over the years. Read it out of different translations. For some reason, I don't know that I've ever read it out of the Amplified. Why? I don't know. Does that make me unspiritual just because I didn't use your favorite version or the woman's version, as some people now call it? Because it's wordy. All the women should just laugh at me and go on. All right. Now, faith is the assurance, the confirmation of the title deed of things we hope for. Being proof, being proof of things we do not see. Now, what's that mean? And, and when, when God's talking about not seeing something, it's not just limiting, it's using one of our senses as a, as a, a combining thing. It covers all your senses. Basically, it's, it's the proof of things that we cannot perceive with our senses or have not perceived with our senses. The conviction of their reality. Then he goes on the brackets and says, faith perceiving is real fact. 
that which is not revealed to the senses. Hallelujah. See, we, we are such creatures of the flesh. I mean, everything we do, in, you know, we do in, in, in this realm is you use your body. You know, if, and, and if you have all your senses intact, you're, you're trusting all of them when you're functioning in the world. Your sight, your hearing, your touch, your smell, your taste. All those things play in. You know, if somebody brings out a plate of food and you, and you got to stop that nose, guess what? Come on now. It could be the best looking down east barbecue you've ever seen in your life. And if your nose is all stopped up with, with, you know, and, and you can't breathe, you won't even taste it. Hello? Now, your eyes might tell you it's good. Are you here? But the taste buds work in conjunction with smell. You've, you've crippled that sense. So you might look at it and go, that looks good. Your memory might even say, I remember that it's good. But when you put it in your mouth, you will go, eh, bland. And, and then you got people sitting around going, that's the best barbecue Pastor Ed has ever made. I mean, it's top notch. It, it, it crossed the threshold of superior Pastor Ed barbecue. Hello. And I have those. Every once in a while I'll make some and I and we just sit down and eat and go, man, I think that's the best one I've ever done. You know, just kind of, it just kind of got it just perfect. You don't get it perfect every time. But sometimes you just get, you just nail it, man. You kind of, woo. Okay. But your senses, okay, your senses are telling you, you know, uh, your, your, ta your taste isn't working because your smell's off. And uh, your sight may say, that looks great, but then you try to eat it, it just doesn't, you can't say that's the best because you can't really tell. Hello? How many of you have ever burned your tongue? Watch out, that pizza's hot. Ha! Ha! You're spitting it out, I mean, you're, you're, but it's too late. You've scorched your tongue. And for the next few days, nothing you eat tastes good. Or, or not even that it tastes bad, it just doesn't have any flavor. Why? Taste buds ain't functioning. Why? You're about to burn them off. Hello? Amen? Uh, how many know that um, your hearing can, can either help you or, or hurt you if you're not hearing stuff? So, like, again, you have a cold, your nose is stopped up, your ears are stopped up, and you can't hear stuff going on around you. Your, your, your eyes are telling you something's happening, but your ear, you can't hear it. You're off. Amen? We are so trained to use all of our senses to perceive everything. We touch stuff. We smell things. We taste them. We hear them. We, we see them. That when it comes to believing God, we get to Hebrews and it says, faith is your assurance. It's the confirmation of the things we hope for. It's the proof of the things we do not see or we do not, have, we do not perceive with our physical senses. Now, one of the most difficult arenas to actually, actually exercise this in is in the arena of health and healing. Now, how many know when you're sick, dealing with symptoms, that it's hard, you know, to say, I believe that I received my healing when your head's going, I don't care what you believe. I hurt! Come on. Your head's screaming, your body's screaming, all your senses are telling you, Man, you're sick as a dog. Amen. This is true. Your senses will start trying to get into the way. And that's why, you know, as we talked about this morning, you have to renew your mind to the Word of God <clears throat> to the point <coughs> that you're believing, even though your eyes are saying something else, even though your senses are saying something else, your belief system takes a higher law and a higher existence and establishes it as a reality in your life. Amen. I said amen. I'll say it again. Amen. Hallelujah. And so faith perceives as a real fact what is not revealed to your senses. See, faith will say, I can't see it. Faith will say, I can't touch it. Faith will say, I can't smell it. Faith will say, I can't taste it. Faith will say, I can't hear it, but I know it's real. Amen. Amen. 
See, heaven's a real place. Well, I, you know, the Bible says so. I, believe, I take by faith what the Word says. Amen. Well, have you ever been there? Nope. You got people go, God's not real. How do you know? You can, we'll prove he's real. Well, you can, I remember in, in high school, now I had my, my biology teacher, uh, high school science teacher, he taught us a couple of years of different stuff, subjects. Mr. Dory, Bill, William Dory, Bill Dory, taught at my high school, then transferred to the arch rival high school. We, might have, we may forgive him in, you know, in the millennium. But uh, Mr. Dory just came in class one day, and, and back then you, you could still talk about God. He said, I want you to prove that God's real. So he was challenging us. So can you put him in a test of? Nope. See? And here, here's the thing. See, when people do that, they're trying to argue your belief system based on what your senses can tell you. And what you have to come to the grips with and come to understand is that believing in God and believing that God exists is a principle or a matter of faith that cannot be proven with the senses. Or I feel him. Well, you know, we sing that song, I feel him in my hands, feel him in my feet, I feel him all over me. But if you don't feel him, he's still real. Yeah. Just because, you know, you may have had a manifestation of the Spirit and you got your, your flesh got in contact with the presence of God and had a reaction. And, you know, but, but you know what? You can have a reaction in the presence of demons. Have you ever been to the movie theater or something like that? And they put on a, a, um, a uh, trailer for a horror movie. Yeah. And it's demonic. I mean, it's not one of those, you know, just freaky, stupid movies. It's a horror movie with devil activity in it and, and, and you sense the evil's presence. Yeah. Well, you can't base the presence of demons on the fact that you had a goose bump. Or as they say in the movie Balto, a people bump. <laughs> uh, no. See, we believe, we believe things are so because, uh, the, because by God's word says we believe God is real as a matter of faith. Whether you can see Remember Jesus said this to Thomas? Remember Thomas, you know, said, my Lord and my God. Jesus said, because you've seen me, you believe, Thomas. Blessed is the man who has not seen me, yet believes. Amen. You know, you, you weren't going to believe. Remember he said this? He said, except I reach forth my hand and thrust it to his side and place my finger into the palm of his hands, I will not be, I believe. Jesus appears to him and says, come, Thomas, put your hand in my side, take your finger in my palm of my hand, and be not faithless but believing. And John Thomas goes, my Lord and my God. And he says, because you've seen, you believe. He said, but blessed is the man who has not seen yet believes. Why? Because faith operates in that realm of not seeing, of not having senses determine whether or not you've gotten got something from God, whether God exists, whether his word is true, whether we've received from God or not. Just because your senses can't touch it and, and can't come in contact with it in the physical realm does not mean it's not so. As a, and quite frankly, that is where the realm of faith begins. It begins at the end of the ability of the senses to discern. Because as long as your senses can discern it, there is no faith required. <coughs> Amen. Let me ask you this. Oh, Benny. I just handed you what? What did I just hand you? Pad. An iPad, all right. Now, would you look at Jerry? Would you say, hey, Jerry, I believe I have an iPad? Would you say that? I have an iPad. You would say, I have an iPad. Why would you not say, I believe I have an iPad? Because you don't need to say, I believe. You're holding it. Yeah. I'll take it back now. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Now you, can, now you have to believe it. Hallelujah. As long as, as Benny's holding that iPad, he wouldn't look, hey, Jerry, look, I believe I got an iPad. That's not how you talk. Why? Because when you're holding it, you don't have to believe. Your senses are telling you you have it. It's not that you believe it. You know, you, you just, I've got it. Here it is. My, my senses are governing and, 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 and telling me and relating to me that it's in my possession. Yet, if Benny gets on the phone tonight and calls Amazon and orders him an Apple iPad. And they say, well, here's your tracking number to be there in three days. You, you can go and tell me, I believe, I'm going, I believe my iPad's on the way. Well, how does he believe that? He's got Amazon's word. 
I just bought me an iPad. Really? Yeah. Uh, it's on the way. I believe it's on the way. I, you, know, you, can say, yeah, you can say, I believe it's on the way. And what would you have that based on? You would base that on the fact they sent you a tracking number and sent you a confirmation. Their word said you ha it's on the way you have it. When your senses can, can handle it, it's not believing. It's just it's, it's, it's sense knowledge. When you're looking at something that's promised to you and you accept that as a truth, your faith lays hold of that and believes and, and accepts as a reality what you're not touching or seeing or hearing or tasting, what your senses cannot govern. And your senses will go berserk. When you come to healing and you, you look at your body and, and it's, it's screaming all kinds of stuff at you. Ever had your body scream at you? You ever tried to believe God and your, your body's going, hey, idiot, I hurt. I don't know what you talk about, but listen to me. I hurt. You ever had your body do that? You know, you ever, I believe I received my healing according to 1 Peter 2, 24. By his stripes, I was healed. You an idiot. Can't you, you know, and you go look in the mirror and you're, you try to blow your nose, and you can't even blow your nose. It's so stopped up. It's just, I mean, you can't even, I mean, you can't even get the air through there. What's going on? See, your senses are trying to, to tell you that what God's Word said about your condition isn't real because it cannot, it cannot touch it. It cannot perceive what God promised you. When the truth of the matter is we have to receive by faith. It's just like when you got born again. You didn't see your spirit get born again. You accept it by faith. If you come to him and confess Jesus is Lord, you're, you'll be born again. Now, let me be honest with you. Some people feel a lot. Some people don't feel a thing. And some people get up and shout up down the church house. Woo! Glory to God. Some people get up and go back and say, well, thank you. Sit down. You ever heard Dad Hagen tell the story about the, the two men in the church? One came in, came down to the altar, and um, got up shouting about, you know, that experience he had had. Another man came down, quietly came down, got up, walked back to a seat. One, one person said about the man who was shouting, well, I tell you, he got something tonight. And kind of talked about the other man, he don't think he got anything. The man who got it from the altar that didn't, didn't have any manifestation at all became the best Christian in the church he ever had, and the other guy never followed God. You can't go by a feeling. Amen. You can't go by God's presence by a feeling. I mean, I'm what you see that song, you know, I've got a feeling everything's going to be all right. Whoa, 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 I've got a feeling. Everybody shout and dump. We, we try to change it up. We said, I've got assurance everything's going to be all right. You know, God, why? Because I got assurance from God's word. And we, tried, we tried to save it. It was one of those hard songs to save because everybody wouldn't sing, I got a feeling. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know what I'm saying? Anybody know what I'm saying? And it's catchy. And, and there's nothing wrong with it. As long as you just teach people, you know, then you understand here we're not moved by our feelings. We're moved by faith. Amen. Sometimes we just don't like to reiterate feelings. We don't like to, you know, I mean, that was a hot, that was a hot song on, on all the Christian networks. Everybody's singing that. You know, we changed it up a little bit. Got it halfway saved. Amen. Almost got it filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Now, see, so we're not moved by feelings. You don't ask people when you, when, you, when you pray for them to be healed. You don't say, well, now, do you feel any better? Well, what do you believe? I believe I've received my healing. Well, never touch your toes. We might ask you to do something. We might ask you to act on your faith, but we don't know how you feel. Do you feel any better? No. In fact, I feel worse. I feel worse than when I came in here. You start, you start listening to your feelings, and you'll, you'll lose everything you got. You can lose what you got by faith by listening to your feelings. I remember that old song, feelings, nothing more than feelings. I don't remember who did that song. Probably don't want to know who did that song. Dick, do you remember who did that song? Thank you. Now, Doyle Tucker did a song on feelings uh, way back in, in the early, early, early 80s on his album called, what they call it, Emancipated. His, his, his feelings were this. He went to the prayer closet. Mr. Feelings didn't want to go in. So he just left him outside. Got in there, got to praying. The glory of God fell in the prayer closet. All of a sudden, Mr. Feelings started knocking on the door and wanted to come in and join him. Hello? You know? 
And then that's how your feelings are. They're finicky. Well, you come to a church service, and if everybody's shouting and running and hooping and hollering, and I love a Pentecostal service. I run with the best of them. Amen? Love the manifestation of the Holy Ghost in that manner. But it's just a bunch of manifestation of the Holy Ghost is here and teach like we're teaching tonight as it is to, to have people running around jumping over chairs. And as a matter of fact, sometimes it's more. Because some people just do that as, as in the flesh because they want to they run laps. And I've run. Don't, don't think, I'm, not, I'm not knocking it. Amen. But if the, if, if the Spirit of God's in manifestation, we want to go with the Spirit of God. Amen. I said amen. And so you get people come back and they'll, they'll have a service where it's wild. And woo, we had, a, we had a church service tonight. Come back in the next night and all there is is teaching going on. Oh, man, that was kind of boring in there tonight. See, you missed the whole point. Amen. Now, I watched Dad Hagen for years. We'd be in services, you know, week-long services or, you know, meetings. And uh, one night you'd have a service where everybody, I mean, everybody in the bill is unglued. Chairs being flipped over, people crawling. I mean, they, even back then, there was a time when they would keep track of how many chairs Craig broke. You know, Craig broke these number of chairs. Everybody else broke this many. All they put together, you know, put it up with the scoreboard up on the thing in the next next night before service started. Just somebody being funny. There's some some folks just have a sense of humor. You know, you need to learn to laugh at stuff. Okay. Well, you come back the next night and everybody wants to do the same thing they did the night before. Why? Because it because it got it got into their senses, and everybody likes it when your senses come in contact with God. And it's manifest in your senses. But you see, I, I'm going to tell you at least nine times out of ten that when that happened on one night, the next night dad would come in, he, he'd come up there, he'd take his Bible out after that, you know, everybody tried to stir it up and make it happen what happened last night, he wouldn't let it. He'd unzip his, he'd unzip his letter thing on his Bible, he'd open it up. Say, so open your Bibles to the 11th chapter of the Gospel of Mark. He'd teach a 45-minute faith lesson, he'd close it up, zip it up, he'd say, we'll see you all tomorrow night. And people were disappointed. I said, people were disappointed. You could feel it. But you see, he knew and understood that in teaching people faith, you can't get them where they start thinking that everything that they feel in their flesh is faith or the Holy Ghost. Amen. Now, sometimes you'll feel the anointing go in you. Other times you won't feel a thing. I've prayed for people who fell, didn't get anything, prayed for other people who didn't fall and got everything. Amen. It's, it's just, it's just as, true as, that's as true as it can be. Amen. I've prayed for, I'm gonna, as, a, as a minister. I've prayed for, as, I'll be quite, can I be real, real honest with you? The times that I haven't felt a thing, we've had the greatest miracles. We've had the greatest signs and wonders. I've prayed over prayer calls and sent them. I remember a couple, well, over a year ago, Brother Joe, we prayed over a prayer cloth for him to take to a friend. Can I be honest with you now that we, we had the backstory on that? I didn't feel a thing. Not a thing. Man was sent home to die, eight days to live. Hospice called in, told him he'd be dead in eight days. A year later, he's at work whole and healed. They sent him home to die. They said, there's nothing else we can do. I prayed over a prayer cloth, didn't feel squat. So you don't go by what you feel. There's times I feel the anointing moving in things. I feel the anointing going into people. I've, had the, I've felt the anointing going in people and they didn't get anything. Why? Because it came right back out. They were trying to get it with their senses. You couldn't get them to get it. You couldn't get them to accept it. You couldn't get them to, to, to settle down and, and understand this is a spiritual thing, not a feeling thing. They were waiting for a feeling instead of just taking it by faith. Lay hands on them. You feel good, you go right back into you. And you stop and try to talk to them. And you, you just can't, you, sometimes you just can't help them. They won't, they won't, they can't get past that. So what do you need? You got to teach. You got to teach the word so you can help them. But in the case of Joe, uh, and, and, and then, and then um, about a couple months ago, Janice came, we got a prayer call, sent to a friend with stage two breast cancer. I didn't feel a thing. Matter of fact, I thought, that works. And you're, you're thinking that. You don't say that stuff. You're, you're thinking, well, I hope they get something because I didn't feel a thing. But I do know this. See, I've learned that I can't trust my feelings. 
I've learned that I can't wait for the goosebump to think, well, I got it tonight. Amen. Amen. That I just have to act in obedience to what God told me to do. And then God will do what he's going to do. Yeah. Now, 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 my act of obedience, it still doesn't make it me. It's still God. Now, this, I'm talking about, right now, I'm, I'm kind of over on ministry right now about this. But see, these things, are, these principles are still true when you're believing God and receiving from God in your body and receiving health and healing and, th and things from God. Those things are still true in that vein. When you come in, you just can't go by your feeling. Woo, praise God. I'm going to get that, so I'm gonna get up in that line tonight because Pastor, Pastor Ed's got the, uh, the Brother Sonny called the ointment. We had a guy back in our church in Green with Brother Sonny. He's gone home. He's, he's the one who used to tell Sister Zabowski. He said, Sister Deborah. He, sp he called her Deborah, D-E-B-E-R, not, not Sister Deborah, or Sister Deb. He called Sister Deborah. And um, we get done with we get done with our hour and a half worship service, and before and, and, and she didn't play. He is Jehovah, and he's he's the head usher and get ready to receive the offering. He get up there before before we he received the offering and say, Sister Deborah, we got to do. He is Jehovah. All right, brother Sonny. Dun, 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 He is Jehovah. And here we go for another hour and a half. Okay. <laughs> hey, look, we're just wild for Jesus, man. You know, uh, we grow up some things, you know, we, some things we don't need to lose, and that is a zeal for God. Hallelujah. Well, brother, you said you used to call the anointing the ointment. Boy, the ointment's flowing tonight. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You see, but you can't, you can't govern whether you're anointed or not by how you feel something. Well, people, people will, will sit in a church service. Y'all might have to go along these lines because this will help you. They'll sit in a church service and will say, well, if you, know, if you need ministry by laying on hands, come on up tonight. And there'll be people who will sit out there to wait to see if people start following or not, whether they come up or not. They're waiting to see if there's a manifestation of something before they'll act. See, they're not, and, and mostly, they're not going to get anything most of the time. Well, they were waiting to see if there was something manifest instead of coming by faith. They didn't come in faith. They came by sight. Four people fell. He's got the flu. I've seen him do it. I've seen him do it at Raymond with Dad Hagen and Pastor Hagen and, and, and Brother Craig. I've seen him start a healing line. And if people start following, people start running up and trying to get in on that. Well, you're not coming in faith. You're coming because you're, you're seeing something. You're seeing what you think is the result of a strong manifestation of the anointing and you're trying to run out there and get in that and get it because you saw it, not because you came in faith. See, when somebody gives you a prayer, if they have a prayer uh, altar call or prayer, call, come on down, we're going to lay hands on you to believe God for your healing. You know, come on, come in faith. Don't come waiting to see if anybody starts falling. Hello? Why do they have ushers and prayer lines? For the people who fall in the flesh. They fall in the spirit, they ain't going to get hurt. That's the truth. Amen. Now, I'm not, being, I'm not trying to knock you. Thing. We, these are all things that we do. We, we do with them. We carry ushers when we're praying for people. We have guest speakers coming. We put ushers behind them. You ever heard Dad tell a story about the woman who hit her, her, hit her, who hit her head on the pew? Sounds like a shotgun going off. Got it with not a thing wrong with her. Because she went out in the spirit. Amen. So when we're going to receive from God, when we're going to receive from heaven, then it has to be by faith. And we have to be over this place like the Amplified Bible says, that um, where faith perceives as a real fact. Amen. Faith perceiving as real fact what is not revealed to the senses. So if you're believing God, then you, you just believe God. Amen? Your, 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 senses, your senses will be telling you, I still hurt. I'm still not doing well. It's not right. There's still bad stuff. I mean, you, you can take this over in other arenas. You can take it over in finances. You can take it over in, in, in different things, in different arenas of life where your senses govern everything, and you're just going to have to believe that faith perceived as a real fact which you cannot be revealed to your senses. So if you come into a prayer line, I, I'm just really honest with you now. I'm not trying to scare people off. But if, you, if you're coming here and we, got, we call and have a prayer line and you're sitting out there and, well, you know, uh, and then we start praying people and all of a sudden you, you know there's a, there's a tick up in the anointing. People start finding you run up there and try to get in on it. You see, you didn't come to, you came because you saw it. Always coming everything in faith. 
I've been in big service. I see them run to try to get in. And, of course, the usual what happens is the usher stop them. Why? Because you didn't come in faith to start with. You're not going to get anything. Well, that was good. Anybody get blessed? Are y'all here? You're going home because y'all just sitting out there like a, like, uh, what are y'all sitting out there like, Brother Jerry? Soaking it in. That's what y'all doing. And that was right. You're just soaking it in like sponges. How do they, dry sponges that are getting hit with fresh water and just, just, in Jesus' name. Amen? Hallelujah. So, when we, when we come back over here to, um, to, to Romans, where God makes reference to things that do not exist as though they did. In other words, your senses, your senses are telling you one thing, but God's word says another. God's word says, by stripes you were healed. Your senses say, I'm sick. God's word says, you know, that himself took your infirmities and bare your sicknesses. Your body says, I'm still carrying them. Amen? Well, you got to get to where your, your, your faith perceives as real fact, that which is not revealed to the senses. Amen. Or cause those things just be not as though they were. Amen. Glory to God. Well, y'all got blessed out of this? We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752. Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.